prism, you would find that the film records a much wider spectrum than the one you see. A variety, variety of forms of radiation, including X-rays, microwaves, and radio waves, have many of the same properties as visible light. The, the reason is that they are all examples of electromagnetic waves. Good. Light has been... That's a paragraph. First paragraph. Thank you. So, electromagnetic waves include a vast uh, range of different waves that we have already mentioned. We have already, we even use when you want, when you want to cook your cup noodles. Cuando quieren hacer or suísima, ¿verdad? Depende. Si son del tipo que toma cup noodles, suísima. Pero, what waves do you use to heat your instant soup, your instant noodles? You use microwaves, right? Microwaves are in the microwave as it may seem mind-blowing, right? So electromagnetic waves are all those, uh, when you go to an X-ray scan, when you take an X-ray scan, you are exposed to that electromagnetic wave, X-rays, which, which have a shorter wavelength than violet light. So uh, the color of light changes as wavelength changes. Yes, for example, if we take from red, one sec, it's the spectrum, as you move from red to violet, you are moving along the spectrum, along the electromagnetic spectrum. Let me just search for it. Electromagnetic spectrum. Let's see. And you're going to tell me how the wavelength is. Me dije que el libro, en el libro de chemistry le explican mejor esto el año pasado que lo vimos. En physics. Bro. Okay, so we have this spectrum, and this is the only segment that we are able to see. So I want Joyce to read the next paragraph, that one that says, Light has been described. Light has been described as a particle, as a wave, or even as a combination of the two. Although the current model incorporates aspects of both particle and wave theories. The wave model is, is best suited for an introductory discussion of light, and it is the one that will be used in reception. Very good. So it mentions that light has those two properties, right? It can be described either as a particle or as a wave. And remember the characteristic of waves? Do waves carry matter or not? or they just carry energy? Remember the movement of the particles in a wave. For example, if we have a transverse wave, the ones that go like this, are those particles moving or just the wave is moving? Just the wave. Just the wave, right? Just the wave, the particles are stationary, they just move up and down but the wave carries energy, but light can be classified, can be described as both, as a particle and as a wave. So there has been a lot of controversy with, those, uh, with that theory, right? But it, had, it can have both properties. And what is the name of the particle of light? It's called a photon. So we have seen, remember in chemistry, electrons, neutrons, uh, protons. Now we know the new one, the one that is related to light the particle that carries electromagnetic energy, which is photon. Photon, un photon, verdad? Que foto viene del griego, luz. So, let's look at this electromagnetic spectrum. As you can see, Nm, what does Nm mean? When we say, when we talk about distance. Nanometers. Nanometers, Nanometers very good. So look at these waves, for example, if we talk about radio waves. Radio waves range from which wavelength? From one meter up to 1,000 meters. That can be the wavelength of a radio wave, right? That's why uh, radio stations, las emisoras de radio, se pueden escuchar uf, a larga distancias because of the wavelength. It's a long wavelength, right? Now let's look what is shorter as we decrease wavelength, 
let's see Valeria. As we decrease wavelength, what comes next after radio waves that has a shorter wavelength? Microwaves. Microwaves. Microwaves, they are the ones that are in the device used to cook, right? In the microwave. So then if we move to a shorter wavelength, Salvador, what do we get? Repeat. If we move from right to left, what happens to the wavelength when we move from right to left? Does it becomes longer or, or it stretches? It becomes smaller. Uh -huh. So a smaller wavelength than microwaves we have? Infrared, right? La luz infrarroja, ¿han escuchado eso? So for example, you can do the experiment you can do it right now if you want. Do you have a controller, a TV controller at hand? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, if you have one, I want you to point the controller at the camera of the computer. ¿Cómo su cámara? Pero está con batería y está funcionando. Sí, Ajá, apunte la lucecita que tiene en la puntita del control. Exacto. Ajá. ¿Aprieta los botones o algo? No. Ven. No, no sé. A ver, hágalo de nuevo. Ah, luego. Ajá, ¿can you see that? Ajá, ahora usted apúntelo solo al ojo y enciéndalo y dígame si mira alguna luz. No. No, ¿verdad? Because that's infrared. That's invisible to our eyes. But what can we, why can we see it? Why are we able to see it through a camera? Because the camera is going to change the wavelength, right? So it makes it red. So that's how infrared works. In a controller, you point to the TV and it sends infrared information, right? But we cannot see it. If we point the controller at, uh, uh, the controller at our eyes, we cannot see it. But through a camera, si usted lo, lo hacen con el teléfono también, con el celular, say graban. Y, por ejemplo, no sé si alguien ha tenido Xbox acá o, o en PlayStation, esa barrita o el Nintendo Wii, la barrita del Nintendo Wii, ¿se acuerda? Creo que estaba bien chiquito. Esa barrita, si ustedes la ven con una, a través de una cámara, through a cell phone camera, you see the infrared dots, right? So that is infrared light. And then, what comes after infrared? Light. Ultravioleta. Esta barra. No, after infrared we have visible light. And visible mm -hmm. light is this colorful bar, which is what we can see, right? So from this whole spectrum, we only see this small visible light. And look, uh, it, visible light is between 700 nanometers and 400 nanometers, the wavelength, right? So look at the frequency of light. The frequency of red light is four times 10 to the 14 hertz. And the frequency of violet, no sé por qué se ve azul acá, but it's violet, is seven times 10 to the 14. Which one has a higher frequency? La violeta. Uh, violet. uh -huh, very good, violet light. Exacto, Francesca. Exactamente, buena referencia. So, as you can uh, remember last year when we were seeing photosynthesis, maybe you remember that we discussed at which wavelength photosynthesis uh, it was more efficient. ¿Se acuerdan que lo vimos en biology? Decía, ah, con la luz, con la luz morada y la luz azul, photosynthesis occurs at a faster rate. Remember that there was a graph in the biology book. Maybe you remember, maybe you don't. So, as you, what happens when you decrease wavelength? What happens to the frequency? A medida que la wavelength se hace más cortita, what happens to the frequency? Se va haciendo más pequeña. Mira acá, compare. At a long wavelength, we have a low frequency, 10 to the 2 hertz, 100 hertz. But if we move to a high frequency, aumenta, aumenta la frequency, and what happens to the wavelength? It becomes shorter, right? Very good. 
So this is the light, the visible light segment that we're able to perceive. Then a shorter wavelength, what is that electromagnetic energy that comes after violet? Ultraviolet. Ultraviolet. So it makes sense, right? Infrared, then red, then all the colors, then we have violet, and then ultraviolet, that means beyond violet. So ultraviolet is the one that comes from the sun, the one that can be harmful for us, right? Then after ultraviolet, we have x-rays, then after x-rays, we have gamma rays, right? So, what happens to energy also? What can you tell me about the energy as we move from right to left with this label up here? Increases. Energy increases. You know where else you can perceive infrared radiation as well? Infrared radiation is non-ionizing. Uh, non so radiation can be classified into two different categories. You know that there is some radiation that can be harmful, right? Que puede producir cáncer. Esa se llama radiación ionizante. Si la radiación no ionizante es la que está antes del color rojo. Bueno, en, desde el visible light para atrás. Esa no, les va, no, no, no interactúa con el ADN y no les puede producir cáncer. So, for example, when you have a stove, una estufa. Ustedes encienden la estufa. Si es eléctrica, ven que la hornilla se pone roja, ¿verdad? That is electromagnetic emission of that color. Yo sé que es el hierro, y el hierro cuando aumenta su energía va a producir ese color rojo. But it also releases heat, right? That heat is infrared radiation, okay? For example, in the case of a iron, una plancha. La plancha no se ve de color, ¿verdad? Cuando se calienta, pero emite calor. That is also infrared radiation, yes? So it carries energy. Mister, ¿por qué en la estufa eléctrica se pone rojo y en la de gas se pone como azul o morado? Cuando enciende. That's a very good question. Because in a gas stove, remember that you're burning a chemical, you're burning methane. I mean, I think it's propane, the, the gas containing an energy in gas. So that burning of that chemical Remember that electrons can change their energy levels. As they change the energy levels, they release different colors of light. So if they release more energy, they will release in a specific color. If they release less energy, they release a different color. And remember that the energy release depends on the chemical bond, right? So as, as you burn that chemical, the color of the flame will be bluish, greenish. But when you hit a metal, it releases a different color, right? It produces a different type of radiation. So that's why. It depends on the, on the, on the elements that are into play. For example, if you burn a copper wire, un cable de cobre, pero para quemarlo se necesita bastante temperatura. Libera una flama que es como verde o como azul. De ese color se mira la flama. Okay, so let's go to page 447, where it says electromagnetic waves vary depending on frequency and wavelength. Remember on the video yesterday that we say electromagnetic waves, Josué, what are electromagnetic waves? Si no me contesta bien, le bajo puntos. What are electromagnetic waves made up of? What types of waves? ¿De qué? Las electromagnetic waves are made up of two types of waves. ¿Qué son cuáles? or two types of fields. Okay, dos puntos menos, ponga atención. So now let's... Electric and magnetic. Electric fields and magnetic fields, very good. Entonces ponga atención, José. Deje de reírse porque si no son puntitos menos. Ahora quiero que lea Marco. Hay donde es en Classical Electromagnetic Wave Theory. Classical... Electromagnetic wave theory, light is considered to be a wave composed of uh, oscillating electric and magnetic fields. These fields are perpendicular to the direction in which the wave moves. As shown in figure two, therefore electromagnetic waves are trans transverse waves 
the electric and magnetic fields are also at right angles to each other. Very good. The magnetic. Less or less. Don't worry. So you just need to know that uh, electromagnetic waves have those two oscillating. What is oscillating? Algo que está oscilando. Something that is in a periodical, in a harmonic motion. So it has those two fields, electro, electric field and magnetic field. So light has those two fields, and that is the oscillating wave that travels in space, right? You know that, in, I, I think that in chemistry, they explain, they talk about more, they talk more about light than in physics. Have you ever seen, for example, uh, el, el polarizado? Right? How does that work? Por ejemplo, con los lentes. También pueden hacer un experimento sencillo un día que anden en el mall y estén aburridos y anden viendo lentes o estén ahí en una tienda. Ustedes pueden agarrar un lente y agarrar otro lente, dos, dos pares de lentes, y pueden ver que se ve más oscuro, ¿verdad? Si uno mueve uno, se ve más clarito, pero ponen los dos, se ve un poco más oscuro. Y si uno los gira, los hace rotar, uno va a ver que llega un punto en que se ve negro, que no pasa nada de luz, ¿sí? Porque esa es la polarización de la luz. Because of those two properties of oscillating magnetic and, el and electric field. Entonces, el polarizado de, un de los lentes está hecho de cierta manera que solo pasen cierta cantidad de rayos de luz. Son los que vayan en cierta dirección. Si ven otra dirección, choca. So that's why it decreases the amount of light that passes through that medium. Now, electromagnetic waves are distinguished by the, their different frequencies and wavelengths. In visible light, these differences in frequency and wavelengths account for different colors, as we, have, as we were seeing. The difference in frequencies and wavelengths also distinguishes visible light from invisible electromagnetic radiation, such as X-rays. And then on table one, we have the type of different waves and their applications. Uh, do you remember when the black hole was first, when there was the first picture of a black hole taken? Creo que fue en 2018. 2019, que se tomó la primera foto de un agujero negro. ¿Alguien recuerda o no? Sí, que era súper mala calidad. Sí, Mauricio, era súper mala calidad, ¿verdad? Pésima calidad. Lo habían tomado mejor con, con un iPhone, creo yo. O sea, parecen que lo tomaron con esas cámaras de rosita fresita. I don't know what cameras you're talking about. No sé o sea, no vivió no bien, sé, entonces. Yo tuve un teléfono de poco yo. Ah. Nice. Y también se le perdió así como... No, mejor no, no es que no finish that sentence. Es que se quiere ir directo para el ministerio, ¿verdad? Ajá. Uh -huh. Ok. So... They used radio waves to take a picture and, and they had to use different telescopes all over the planet. Porque no fue subirte con telescopio, porque uno no puede ver un agujero negro. It's not possible to see a black hole because it's called black hole, because it absorbs light. Why are you able to see something? Because light is reflected on a surface. ¿Qué pasa si ustedes apagan la luz? No van a ver nada. ¿Por qué? Porque no hay luz que se refleje y que puedan percibir. ¿verdad? So that's why... Uh, bueno, Francesca creo que como eh, es fan de Marvel, pero vamos a darnos cuenta que Ant-Man, there's a point that you cannot go so small because you won't be able to see anything. No, sería invisible. O sea, llega a cierto tamaño que ya es invisible lo que sea más pequeño que eso. ¿Sí? Why? Because remember that what, is, what do we have between the nucleus and the electrons? Do we have matter or we have space? Entre los orbitales y el núcleo. ¿Qué hay ahí? Matter. Hay matter. Usted está todavía en el modelo atómico de J.J. Thompson. Que decía que los electrons estaban incrustados en el núcleo. Puede ser el de... El de Rutherford. No, between the... Acuérdense el año pasado, when we first started chemistry, I told you, okay, imagine the atom, the hydrogen atom, for example, imagine the nucleus to be at the center of a football field, que ponga una pelota de tenis en el centro del campo, y que los electrons estarían como en el estadio, como en, la, en los asientos más lejanos. So between the nucleus and the electrons, we have space, empty space, right? 
So that space, that means that it has a distance, right? We can measure that. And remember that electromagnetic waves have also a wavelength. So if we become too small, we won't be able to see anything. Y específicamente, ¿qué creen que no vamos a poder ver? Donde dice visible light. Look at table one, invisible light, Josué. What is the shortest wavelength in visible light for violet? Ahí en la tabla uno. Now visible. Uh -huh, and they say visible light. Start from red up to violet. So what is the shortest wavelength? Uh, 400. 400 nanometers. That means that if you become smaller than 400 nanometers, you won't be able to see anything because a wave of violet light va a pasar así, miren, ustedes van a estar acá y la wave va a pasar, ni lo va a tocar, ¿verdad? Porque la wavelength ya va a ser más grande que ustedes. Mister, okay. yo sé que tal vez no tiene nada que ver, pero es una duda que tengo. Ajá, cuénteme. Las hormigas son ciegas. No. No, porque ahí no estamos hablando de nanometers. Ahí estamos hablando, por, quizá los ojos de una hormiga, de micrometers. But remember that a micrometer is just, solo, ¿verdad? It's just one, bi, one million of a meter. La millonésima parte de un metro. O la milésima parte de un milímetro. Si se un milímetro en la regla y lo dividen en mil partes, it's still super, super small, but it's not in the nanometer scale. Nanometer ya es one billion of a meter. So that's why there is a, that, that size, si ustedes ya son más pequeños que el wavelength of violet light, you won't be able to see anything because light is not going to be reflected on your eyes no more, right? Profe, ¿y hay insecto o animal que sea ciego? Eh, casi ciego, sí, están los murciélagos. But el topo. Las hormigas no son ciegas, el topo pero mira todo. Ciego. ¿Cómo dice Edwin? Que las hormigas no son ciegas, pero casi no miran. Sí, I mean. Yeah, Solo I, detectan I, movimiento. Ajá, uh -huh. that's why insects, they have those antennae, right? The antennae are the ones used to detect changes in heat and different changes in chemicals in the air, right? But as I was telling you, there is this, eh, hay una langosta, jóvenes, que se llama langosta mantis, que esa langosta puede golpear. Ah, la que pega golpes y son como burbujas de aire. Ajá, pero... Que rompen vidrios. Esos golpes es como un disparo de una 22. ¿Eh? El golpe de esa langosta, si les pega, es como que les peguen un, una 22 ahí. De, con una pistola de calibre 22. Entonces, they are capable of seeing in, elect, in other electromagnetic spectrum. Aparte de ver en visible light, they can also see in ultraviolet and they can also see in eh, X-rays. Pueden llegar a ver en diferentes wavelengths. So, they have a larger spectrum. They can detect even more than we can detect. And we cannot imagine it, right? Try to imagine a new color. I think it's impossible for everyone to imagine a new color. No, verdad? Maybe if we would, if we would have a different uh, setup in our eyes to perceive other wavelengths, we could see other colors. But right now, right, as of now, it's impossible for us to imagine, to even imagine a different color other than the ones from violet to red. So, yes. That's what I was telling you, como dice Mauricio, sí, o sea, imagínense que llega a niveles subatómicos. Ant-Man. Entonces, ¿cómo es posible que ve? A lo mejor quizá la tecnología, ¿verdad? En, en su traje le permite cambiar la wavelength del, de la luz para poder percibirla. But yes, basically that's it. Go to next page. Mister, me están llamando. Ya regreso. Okay, Silly. Don't worry. I'm, I'm recording this. Don't worry. So on page 448, we, it says, all electromagnetic waves move at the speed of light. So that is true for even from microwaves, from radio waves up to X-rays and gamma rays, they move at the speed of light. They all move at the same speed. So what changes in electromagnetic waves if the speed is, is constant? ¿Qué es lo que podríamos cambiar? Miren la equation. Vamos a ver, Melanie. Where it says wave speed equation right there. What is that equation, that formula? 
Uh, speed of light equal frequency times wavelength. Very good. So what happens, I mean, the speed of light is constant. It mentions here that it ha there have been several, several experiments to measure the speed of light, and they have been successful to measure that speed. Miren, dice que la velocidad, el error, is by 0.001%, o sea, una milésima de porcentaje de error, de tan preciso que fueron experiments. I'm not, I'm not sure what experiments they did. Probably they didn't use visible light. They used radiation from radioactive elements to measure more precisely the speed of that radiation. But they came to the conclusion, the experiment, the, the accepted value is 2.9, 997, no, 99,792,458 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Okay, that is the speed of light. So we're not going to memorize that number. So what number are we going to use for these calculations? Vamos a 2.99 times 10 to the power of 8, o oh, usamos 3 por 10 a la 8, 3 times 8, 3 times 10 to the power of 8. Así como se aprendieron gravity, así también nos vamos a aprender speed of light. 3 times 10 to the power of 8, that is the speed of light, meters per second. Uh, so for example, sunlight, it takes 8 minutes from the sun to our eyes to travel. Entonces, ustedes están viendo el sol como era hace ocho minutos. And that's why there, there is also several things that, for example, when you look at the sky at night, cuando ustedes ven las estrellas, ustedes en realidad no saben si están viendo una estrella que murió hace millones de años. Okay? That's because light has taken millions of years from that star to reach our planet. So imagine that star was born 20 millions of years ago. And then it produced some light, and that light was traveling for millions and millions of years up when it reached our planet. So that means that maybe you look at a star, and that star has been dead for a long time. What we are just seeing is the light that has been traveling for millions of years. Okay? So if the speed needs to be constant, si la velocidad tiene que ser constante, Melanie, what should be changed? What can change in an electromagnetic wave? Look at the equation and tell me to, and to give me a constant value for C para que el valor de C no cambie. If the frequency changes, what else has to change? The wavelength. Wavelength, right? So that's why if frequency increases, si la frequency aumenta, wavelength no puede aumentar, ¿verdad? Porque si las dos aumentan, ¿qué va a pasar con the speed of light? Con C. It's going to increase as well. So if one increases, the other one has to decrease proportionally, right? So as we were seeing in the graph before, when the frequency of light increases, that wavelength decreases. And when the wavelength increases, cuando es más larga la wavelength, then the frequency decreases, right? That's the relationship that you need to consider. For example, I just bought a light bulb, me compré un poco, el naranja, que no emite luz blanca, solo emite luz naranja. Pero no es como un foco normal, que un, un foco naranja, ¿verdad? Que es que le pintan el vidrio para que se vea naranja. Que produce luz blanca, pero la luz al pasar por el color naranja pareciera que fuera orange. Pero este, el, o sea, yo compré uno en la racha. Lo que es que le sobra el pistón, ¿no? Pero en realidad no estaba caro. Si, quedan, si les interesa, cuesta como 120 pesos. Y se mira bien cool, la verdad. Pero es un foco que emite luz naranja, ¿sí? No le va a emitir ningún otro wavelength de luz. Tiene un wavelength específico. Dicen que eso es bueno en realidad para dormir, nada más que no tengo mi cuarto. Y el foco normal de luz blanca, ese sí, sí emite todos los colores. ¿verdad? All the colors of the spectrum are in that type of light. So yes, that's basically the introduction. And next week we're going to finish this lesson y después comenzamos con los espejos. Y espejos ya es un poquito más complejo. So we need to start or to be prepared. And let me just stop.